So the tabloids revealed that, that Ronnie was in a sexual relationship with Lord Boothby, who was a Tory, which was actually quite a big deal at the time because homosexuality was still a criminal offence back then in 1964. So let's talk about Ronnie's murder. So Ronnie Cray walked into a pub and shot George Cornell, a member of a rival gang in a pub in Whitechapel in March in 1966. So the victim had apparently previously called Ronnie a fat puff, which is, if you don't know, a derogatory term for gay men. And there was a big shootout between the two gangs the previous day. And then Cornell, by chance, was drinking in a random pub, which is only a mile away from where the craze lived. And by doing that, obviously, he broke one of the cardinal rules of being a gangster, which are, as we all know, don't get high for your own supply, niches get stitches and if possible you should escape by smashing a vase or a vase on your captors and also don't socialize on enemy turf aka don't eat where you shit but Cornell didn't listen to this he went out drinking nearby Ronnie heard where he was drinking walked into the pub and shot him in the head in front of everybody and the next year which was October 1966 both twins allegedly uh, killed a minor member of their own gang called Jack the Hat McVitty, whose grandfather invented the digestive biscuit. Not really. And they did this because he apparently failed to fulfill a contract that they had prepaid him for, where he was supposed to kill their financial advisor, presumably because they thought this man had too much information which could incriminate them. During their trial, it was actually very hard to get any witnesses to testify against the craze, which just shows that their reputation must have preceded them. And a lot of witnesses were very intimidated. But eventually they managed to get the barmaid who was there at the time when Cray shot McVitie to testify. And what I think is quite interesting, it was later found out that even from Broadmoor Hospital and even when his brother Reggie was in prison, Ronnie still managed to run a business enterprise. He was providing uh, bodyguards for Hollywood stars when they visited London. So Ronnie identified as being bisexual and he actually planned to marry a woman he'd been dating for almost three years. Now, as you might know, there have been a couple of films about the craze. There's one unimaginatively called The Craze, which was made in 1990 and it starred the brothers from Spandau Ballet who are Martin and Gary Kemp, and also Legend, which is the 2015 biopic starring Tom Hardy as both of the twins. Spandau Ballet, of course, are famous for their song Gold, and Hardy, of course, is famous for playing Batman's Bane. Well, not from his ashes, then I will have my permission to die. Okay, so let's talk a bit about Ronnie's psychological makeup. So my theory is that Ronnie Cray had a personality disorder, specifically antisocial personality disorder. So I'm talking about something that's not a mental illness, which is like a temporary change of your baseline states by specific symptoms, but rather part of your personality. So it's permanent, it's deep, and it's ingrained. Antisocial personality disorder is when the person has no regard for right or wrong. They ignore the rights and the feelings of others. I've, I've done a previous episode on this, so go check that out. People with antisocial personality disorder tend to manipulate other people, they treat them harshly, they have this like callous indifference and they show little remorse or guilt for their behaviour and their actions. People with antisocial personality disorder often violate the law and they become career criminals. So they might lie, they might be violent, they might act impulsively, they often have problems with alcohol and drugs and the craze very much fitted into this picture because they were very versatile criminals and they were into you know, extortion and arson and lots of violence since they were kids and they had their own gang. You know, there was just so much antisocial behavior from beating up sergeants all the way to murder. So it really kind of fits in with this diagnosis. So in addition to all of that, I think that Ronnie, as part of his natural personality, he was very sensitive to being slighted, particularly about his sexuality. And he would fight anybody who insulted him. And I imagine growing up in that era where being gay or bisexual was less acceptable than it is now, probably made him even more kind of sensitive about challenges to his manhood. So when this did happen, he probably felt that he had to act violently. I think another issue is that they didn't really have a father figure. The crazed father was in and out of their lives, but they were very close and they had this close gang. So I think they kind of gave each other their moral code and they almost fed off each other and they gave each other permission to act in this kind of antisocial way, terrorizing the neighborhood. I think another element is their reputation. So not only 
only were they gangsters, but they were glamorous celebrities as well. They had nice cars, they had clothes, they had celebrity friends. So there might have been many other peers that were kind of jealous of them. So the Krays knew they had to hold their position as alpha males. They couldn't permit any subordination. So they had to be violent and aggressive to stay on top. Hello, cruel world. What you just saw there was a tiny little tantalizing taste. Mm -hmm. Kind of nutty of a much longer episode. You should go check it out if you're interested. The link will be in the description below. If you're a fan of either true crime or mental illness <clears throat> or the crossover between the two, then you've got to go and check out my main YouTube channel, A Psych for Sore Minds. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant, forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders for a living so that you don't have to. My channel covers a whole range, a smorgasbord of topics related to true crime and mental illness. For example, high profile true crime cases with my own kind of personal psychoanalysis of individuals. I discuss issues related to criminality. I discuss individual diagnoses. I give advice about psychiatric problems. I interview ex-patients. I do a lot. There is something for everybody on my channel and I implore you to go and check it out. You can even steal some of my ideas, palm them off as your own to impress your friends and impress people at dinner parties. It's all good. I've got your back. Until next time, stay euthymic, check out my channel and please do not forget, I love you. Thank you.